everyone, it's a little bit late due to the book release, but today I wanted to film for you my November wrap up. I read three books this month and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them and what I thought about them. So the first book that I read in November was A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. This is one of my daughter's books and I picked this up firstly because it's a bit magical, it's a bit witchy and I started reading it just after Halloween I think and then finished it right at the beginning of November. But also, with my daughter's books, if they're ones that I'm not familiar with, I like to give them a read. Firstly, just to check that they're age appropriate so that I know whether to say, actually read that, you know, in a few years or whatever. But also whether I think it's gonna be something that she will enjoy because she reads really slowly. And if she's gonna invest her time in a book, I think it needs to be something that's gonna interest her at this, at this stage. So, A Pinch of Magic is about three sisters and they have a curse placed on them. The whole family, the women in the family have a curse on them that means that they can't leave this set of islands. And they also have some magical items. They have, I think it's a bag that they can hide things in or makes them disappear. I can't remember because it's a month ago. Um, there's like a mirror and they can talk to people via it and there's an uh, invisibility thing, there's things, they have these objects. So they want to be able to be free of the curse so that they can live a life where they can move beyond the confines of where they live, but they also um, are interested in these items and where they can take them. So it's a really magical tale, it's a lot of fun. I like the fact that the characters are um, it's sort of female-centred, so you've got the three sisters. Their grandmother is a really important character. Um, I thought that that was a lot of fun. Um, it was just, it was interesting. It was, yeah, it's it's one of the better middle-grade fiction books that I have read. Um, I thought it was well-written. Well I thought that the plot moved places that I didn't think that it would. I liked the characters. So, yeah, in general, I enjoyed it. It was pretty decent, and I think my daughter will enjoy it also. Look at those sprayed edges. It's one of the reasons I picked it up. It's just beautiful. And the mermaidy mirror on the back. I couldn't help myself. It's decent. It's all right. I enjoyed that one. Then I read My Mum, Tracy Beaker. Now, last month, I read The Story of Tracy Beaker. These are rereads for me. I read them. Well, The Story of Tracy Beaker is. I read it when I was younger. Um, now, with My Mum, Tracy Beaker, I sat and watched the film with, is it a film? It's, or like a TV series smushed together, or a, I don't know what you would call it. Um, but I sat and watched it with my daughter, who is Jacqueline Wilson, mad. And I really enjoyed it. It was really nostalgic because it has the same actors in. It's just, it was really good. So I watched that and I thought, you know what? I, I fancy reading the book as well. It's the same plot. It's, you know, if you've seen the TV thing, then the book's much the same. But I like Jacqueline Wilson's writing. It was still good fun. Um, so it follows, Tracy Beaker is now a parent of a little girl called Jess, and um, Tracy has started to date a boy that she met when she was young, who's now a famous footballer, and it's about her and Jess adjusting to this situation and how Jess feels about this footballer, whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, yeah, it's really good. Again, Jacqueline Wilson doesn't shy away from... Um, negative situations and things going wrong. It's all very real life, but told in such a, an understandable way for young people. So I think her books are great. This one was a lot of fun. I think whether it's a young person reading this or whether you're an adult that enjoyed it when you were younger, it's, it's good. I really liked it. And then I moved on to Bob Mortimer's autobiography, And Away. I bought this as a treat for myself. Um, this, so I... I was a big fan of shooting stars and all that stuff in the 90s and then recently when the fishing show started, I don't know how many series there's been, maybe there's been like four or five, but it's just one of my favourite programmes on TV. It's, I like programmes that are nice. Um, I do also like things that are gritty, but I definitely think there's a place for things that are just kind and warm. And I really think that with the fishing show, is it called Gone Fishing with... Um, Paul Whitehouse, and I love the fact that that show centres around um, a male friendship and talking about life for older men. I think there's such a place for having conversations about that and showing those really important friendships. I love all of that. I think it's funny, 
The shots are just beautiful of the British countryside and of course as a sea lover I love the fish. It's just, it's got everything for me. So I was interested in um, Bob's autobiography when it came out because I've always been a fan to be fair. So this one, first of all a number of the stories that are in here are public knowledge anyway. There's a lot of the things that he said on Would I Lie to You. So if you are somebody that follows Bob Mortimer, you'll probably know bits of what's in here. Um, I really enjoyed particularly the beginning of it because things about his younger life aren't as well known. Um, and he's got a really sort of approachable, friendly writing style. In part, it's a bit, inf well, sort of informal in that it's not author style, if you see what I mean. It's, I don't want to say amateurish because it's not amateurish, but it's just... Um, written in a more, um, you know, not too highfalutin, <laughs> I don't know, um, but like the way that he introduces some of the chapters is clunky, but it's nicely clunky, if that makes any kind of sense. Um, so I really enjoyed the beginning of the book, but as it went on, although I still enjoyed it, I found that, I felt it lost its way. I felt that there was a real thread at the start about who Bob Mortimer was, and the way that his life had gone and the kind of person he was, he was very shy um, and his sort of dedication to his mother. And I thought it was going to follow that thread. I mean, it did to an extent, but that, that would be a really strong point throughout the whole of the book when he's then telling the stories of himself on TV that, I don't know, that it might sort of finish with a lesson about overcoming shyness and being proud of your working class roots. I don't know. I just, I, I tell you what it was, is that as it went on, it became more of a collection of anecdotes rather than a weaving narrative. And so, although I still loved it because I love Bob's stories and I love the way that he writes and all of that, it was still enjoyable. But I just did feel as it got towards the end that I kind of thought, oh, okay, where is this going? And then it just sort of stopped as it got to today. And I would have liked to have had a really clear kind of message, story, narrative. I mean, obviously there's a narrative because it's his life, but do you know what I mean? Like something to hang it on. Um, and I, I felt that, although it's still really good, um, that would be my little criticism of it, but it's got lots of photos of him when he was younger, loads of anecdotes. So if you're a fan, I'd still absolutely go for it. And I'd be interested how you felt about how the story runs in this book. So. Yeah, I enjoyed all of those. That's all I got through reading. It's been super busy. And in December, I mean, where are we now? The 16th, and I still haven't finished a book. But there we go. Um, let me know what you're reading. Give me some recommendations of anything that you think I would like. And uh, don't forget to hit like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more videos like this one. Take care.